my name is Chris Gray. I'm a interdisciplinary artist trained in ceramics. Both my undergraduate and graduate degree have been conferred through ceramic departments. Um, I mostly work in performance and live art. And uh, I also have a tendency towards collaboration, uh, which is kind of amazing to be called into this project to collaborate with someone who I've never met and know nothing about. And I've been based in New York City since 2012. I am a visiting artist and teaching professor at Penn State University. And when I took this job uh, a year and a half ago, <clears throat> I thought uh, I, would, I would be sort of spending some of my time here and some of my time in New York where I maintain my apartment in Brooklyn. But I am finding myself here in my apartment in central Pennsylvania in a funny way. Like when I left New York, uh, I left most of the things that I sort of love to surround myself with in my apartment there. I would have imagined that I would be splitting my time and uh, going back and forth between State College, Pennsylvania, and Brooklyn, New York, uh, which I did for a while. So I find myself sort of walking around my home here, which is you know, a little bit, it's like populated with some things that I have brought with me or bought while I'm here. Uh, and then just a lot of things that were here, like this whole apartment was furnished. So the couches and uh, in large part, the furniture um, all sort of came with the house and it was really sparsely decorated. And uh, I find myself actually the thing that I miss most um, in this time and in the sort of separation from my home space in New York is being surrounded by all of the art objects that I'm usually in close proximity to. So I sort of like find myself walking around my apartment, just kind of like touching things, you know, like watering the plants and then like staying there and touching or talking to the plants. Just noticing all of the patterns around me in my house, like the things that I have here that, that are things that I've chosen, things that have been here and start to kind of like clash or interact with patterns. The thing that I felt most excited about in terms of like making and being creative is that during the pandemic, I bought my first sewing machine, which I got off of Craigslist uh, shortly after I got that sewing machine, which is the first sewing machine that I've ever owned. Uh, I got my second one, which uh, I retrieved from a dumpster at a thrift store um, in a neighboring village. And then shortly after that, I got a third machine, which is a uh, serger. During the pandemic, a, a lot of folks have taken to sewing and um, invested more time and energy in crafting masks for themselves or for others. Uh, I have not been doing that at home. I have been making my own fetish gear. One of the things that I feel really frustrated about as a trans person is that all of the sort of like jock strap or mask spectrum fetish gear that I love um, and, and love to wear, all of it sort of made for um, scrotum toters. So uh, bodies that might have uh, protruding genitals. My genitals do not protrude. And so I'm left with a great deal of sort of like empty space in the front of jock straps, which feels like so frustrating and um, ridiculous. But also there's not really an equivalent that is made or designed for my body. So while everyone else is sewing up um, protective gear, I've just been down here in my basement apartment in central Pennsylvania, making my own jock straps, and taking opportunities to be playful with it and curious about uh, what might be on the horizon for me next. And I'm really looking forward to being a part of this project. I am looking forward to being uh, partnered with 
someone brand new as an experiment. And I'm excited about what possibilities might be there that are different from being together in the flesh. So sort of um, really looking forward to what might come.